Please, God, would you? Can you hear that? So I, I don't know where you are right now, but God does. He knows exactly where you are. He knows how long you've been at it. He knows about the scars that you carry. You know what he knows about? He knows about your regrets. He knows about those things that you and I do and have done. Some of them go way back, don't they? Uh, he well knows about the language that you used, that you deeply regret. He, he, he knows. He knows all about us. Do you know that he sees us? He loves us? One of my favorite Bible verses, and I'm sure yours is too, that even the very hairs upon our heads are numbered in the presence of God. He made you. Jesus died for you. And he loves you. He knows you. He sees you. And he wants you to know something. That you can come to him and say, please God, i got some things I need to talk to you about. You know what? He not only hears our prayer, but he answers our prayer. Join me as we pray together. Lord, right now, I want to pray for people. Friends of mine, people that I don't know, people that send me emails, write to me, people in my own congregation, people in congregations and gathering all across the United States of America. I want to pray for people in uniform right now, people who serve, for our brave men and women everywhere, for our medical community. But Lord, right now specifically, I'm praying for somebody who's grappling and crying out to you. They don't know whether they should. Maybe someone who feels like they're begging. Maybe, Lord, I just pray that right now people would not only give their lives to Christ, but they would come to the point at which they see you as our loving, heavenly Father. This is the moment of decision. This is your encouraging word, and we believe it. I believe it. May someone right now believe it, that we can come to you and say, please, God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read to you the Lord's Prayer. That's right. What a prayer. So much that can be said about the Lord's Prayer. I, lo I love the Lord's Prayer, don't you? Uh, I feel as though I've prayed the Lord's Prayer all my life. I went to boarding school in Africa as a young boy. We prayed the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I have quoted, recited the Lord's Prayer, and I might add, in languages other than English. I've, I've said the Lord's Prayer. I've read it. Uh, I've preached on the Lord's Prayer. And I want you to see something today that God has put in my heart. Here's this group of people. Uh, these were people just like you and me, living in a, a struggling world, surrounded by very difficult circumstances. You can only imagine the regrets that they had the unkind things that they'd said. Uh, I wish we could sort of take a peek into their family life. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these men who were the disciples um, had a real problem with constantly leaving to follow Jesus all over because back at home, they always left their wives, the mothers, and their children. Maybe you've been uh, left at home and you've got such a sweet spirit about you Maybe your husband or your wife, whoever's the breadwinner in your home, is out there uh, making ends meet and having to travel a lot, pack suitcases, um, 
You know, I got a friend I know that comes home on Friday night, gets home at seven o'clock at night, and spends Saturday and Sunday, Monday morning, first thing, 6 a.m., the first flight out of town. They gone all week. This has been going on for years. Uh, this particular person hasn't been home for years during the week. Comes home on the weekends. Hard to be a, a father, a mother, just on weekends, right? Boy, do we thank God for parents who have been sort of foundation holders and builders. We're just so grateful to the Lord for that. Well, this is what Jesus said when they came and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus said, and I'm reading from verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. This then is how you should talk with God, talk to God. This is how you should converse, have a conversation with God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us for our debts as we also have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And many manuscripts add, for thine is the kingdom, yours is the kingdom, yours is the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. You know, my friends, a lot can be said about the Lord's Prayer. This is a theological statement, it's a doctrinal statement, it's a teaching statement, it tells us about God, tells us about ourselves, uh, uncovers just a, a myriad of deep truths about life and about our relationship with our Heavenly Father. But I, I'm going to tell you that God showed me something that I just simply pass on to you today. Number one, please come. Look at that first statement there in verse 10. Your kingdom come. Please, oh God, would you bring the reality of your heavenly kingdom to bear full brunt on the sin-sick world of ours? You know, I've thought about that. Why please come? Why did God tell us when we pray, let's ask him to bring his kingdom to come? That means let it happen now. I think because Jesus knows how perfect his kingdom is. <laughs> we don't any more than we understand perfect people. I was sharing with a friend just recently. You know, we lose loved ones, and I have, and you have, and our hearts hurt, and we we miss them, and many times we punctuate the missing of our loved ones by saying, oh, if only Daddy had been here for my wedding. Oh, that's very real. Well, I just wish God hadn't taken my mother so soon. You know, I, I, I know that my sister's in heaven, but I just wish that she had, oh, that's all real. Don't even think twice. Don't take away from that. I'm with you 100%. And here's Jesus saying, let's ask him please to bring his kingdom. Do you know why? Because he knows what perfect means. The coming of his kingdom is the very announcement of the perfectness of the recreation of God. It means everything goes back to the way God intended it to be. No exceptions. No one left out. The earth and the firmament, the galaxy of God's sovereign orbit, and every single person who is called upon the name of Jesus, perfect. <laughs> I love that, don't you? 
We don't understand that Jesus said, please, come. Here's the second one. Please, guide. Please, guide me. Look at verse 9. Thy will be done. Your will be done. What does that mean? It means that Jesus is inviting all of us to ask him to guide us, to counsel us, to show us, to give us his wisdom, his direction, his understanding, his peace. Your will be done. Do you know, by the way, in 1 John chapter 2, the Bible says that you know him, and the way you know that you know him is if, in fact, you do his commands. The one who says, I know him, but does not do his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. The Bible says the mark of knowing Christ as your Savior is the submission of you and I who claim to know Christ to the very will of God. You know, Jesus showed us the way. Standing in the garden of his betrayal and looking up to the heavens, this is Jesus himself sweating drops of blood and he says, Oh God, please take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Isn't this fantastic? Jesus, looking at us, saying, here's what you can ask him for. Please, please come. Please, guide. You know, we sing a great hymn, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim in a barren land. Guide me. You need God's guidance, I do, you do, we do. You take the will of God out of our lives, we become aimless. Just look at the children of Israel, delivered from bondage in Egypt. And every time they stop pleading with God to make known His will and to obey His will, they got into a speed wobble. They were running into each other, shouting, carrying on, getting into wars hating one another. Did you hear that, people? The will of God. We need God's will when we marry. We need God's will in our homes. We need God's will for our lives, business decisions. We need God's will as we study His Word, as we bring up our sons and our daughters. We need God's will in knowing which college to go to and which way to turn. We need God's will to know whether to go left or right. Please, God, Please, Lord Jesus, come. Your kingdom come. Please, God. Number three, please provide. I love this third one, verse 11. So basic. Give us today our daily bread. By the way, I love bread. I know you do too. It's a basic, basic food type. Basic. You know, I, I've been among people, you have too, where I tell you, one slice of bread is a lot. For some people, that's an entire meal. You know? And what Jesus was saying here, look, at the very basic, the basis of the things that you need in your life, the basic provision of your life, is to ask God, what is it that you need today? What is it? What, what are you yearning for? What, what's missing? Where's the gap? What, what, what is it that you want God to do for you? Is it finances? Are you struggling to make ends meet? Your job? Maybe your, your wage is not high enough. Maybe, maybe you're barely making it. Maybe you've racked up some unbelievable medical bills and you're just so burdened and pray for God's miracle today. I'm going to pray with you. Write to me. Say, 
say, Pastor, pray with me. Maybe you're just so burdened. Maybe you've got so many bills right now. You don't know which way to turn. Maybe it's, it's, it's to reconnect with a son that you love or a daughter. Maybe your basic provision is just, just a sense of peace in your home. Yes, you're married and you've got your home, but there's just a, a sense of disquiet. It's like an unspoken, unseen disquiet. I'm going to pray with you, okay? That's what he's saying here. Please, Lord, provide. Yes, provide. We always reduce this to things, but it's the provision of my heart and my soul. He'll do it for you. Number four, please forgive. Forgive us for our sin. <laughs> Oh, uh, you're a sinner, my friend. That news to you? The Bible says all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None righteous, no, not one. Step number one with forgiveness is ask God to forgive you for your sin under salvation. Do it now. Ask Him to forgive you and receive Jesus into your heart. And I'm going to ask you in a minute to record that, to write that, to respond to that. You can say yes. Because you've just given your life to Christ. Ask Him to forgive. That's why He died on the cross for your sin and for my sin. Please, oh God, would you forgive me for my sin? And He'll do it because it's already been done on the cross. Jesus died for your sin and for mine. He paid the price in full. The debt is paid. You are forgiven, my friend. Wow, isn't that fantastic? Number five, please help. I, I wish that Jesus had just stopped with the forgiveness. You know, I love talking about Jesus forgiving me, but what did he say next? Just as I am forgiving those who have sinned against me. Whoa! Uh-uh. You carrying that burden right now? I tell you, folks, I don't know many people that don't. You've been hurt by someone. You've been abused at boarding school in your childhood. Someone molested you many years ago. Someone belittled you. Someone made fun of you when you were playing that sport. Someone made you feel about that big Someone treated you sarcastically. Listen, the list goes on and you harbor something. Yeah, right, you do. It's so hard to forgive, but you must forgive others. How do we do that? Please help me, Lord. Can you hear that? <laughs> Please help me, Lord. I can't do this, but you can when Jesus does it in and for you by His Spirit. Number six, please prevent. Please prevent. Lead me not into temptation. All of us get tempted. Lord, please prevent me from succumbing to the evil one. Lord, I've made a decision. I'm no longer going to say. I'm no longer going to do. I'm no longer going to touch. I'm no longer going to be. Lord, help me. Please prevent me. You know what he does? He throws up a roadblock. Christ in you enables you to become an overcomer. One more. Please accept. I love the last one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Please accept my praise of you like he doesn't. But he wants us to. It's like my children, my grandchildren. They don't have to tell me that they love me. I know they do. But I still want them to tell me. It does something for my soul, spirit. But you know it's good for them to tell me too. You got it? That's who Jesus is. This, my friends is the transforming work of God in Christ Jesus. This is the relationship he gives us. Please, God, would you hear me? Are you ready to give your life to Christ? 
Would you trust him as your Savior? And Lord, pray this prayer with me today. Dear God, please save me. I ask you, I repent of my sin, and by faith I receive you into my heart today. Please, God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, my friends. Thank you for watching the Encouraging Word on YouTube. If you were blessed by this message, would you like it, comment, and perhaps would you subscribe and get connected with us? In fact, if you want to discover more about the Encouraging Word, visit our website at tewonline.org. God bless you today.